All right, so continuing with this shape painting, right, which is a very different way of getting started than sketching it out. This just allows me to fill up the space. Select colors, and I'm basically, I'm trying to establish my lightest lights, my darkest darks, and not get too focused on details too early. But it helps me to start seeing in terms of lights and darks. You just hold down option when you're on the brush tool. And that will hold down option, hover, click where you want it, let go, and that changes your foreground color. It's called the eyedropper tool that the option gives you a shortcut to. And for the hair, you know, at this 72% opacity, I can start to flesh that in and I can add some color into it. Darker values, I can kind of mix them into each other. The key is because I'm, I'm working at 72%, every time I put something down, it's kind of creating new pixels. So you see all of the kind of pixels that are created when things overlap. Now this is still just our base layer. But it starts to give us a sense of palette, a sense of form that we can then use. And I just zoom in and out with command plus and minus. But when we get more refined, I'll show you some other ways we can do that without ever having to to lose focus on what we're doing. I'll put the highlight in the eye. And this is exactly how some people start traditional paintings, you know, with just kind of a shape painting. It's not usually how I start traditional paintings. I tend to, to start with a pretty clear, drawn out plan. But both are valid approaches. She needs ears, even if they're very flat to her head. She needs a neck. I'm going to do that, that side view neck. Because I think sketching it out can kind of show you some of the things that are important as well. And at this stage, I can just paint with white, you know, just as much as I can paint with any other color. But remember, it's all on top of our blank white layer. So if I take the blank white away, all of this is our pixels I'm choosing. And I want to fill in that nose. Whoops. And I want to expand my palette a little bit. Also at this stage, you can actually start setting aside certain colors you think are going to be helpful. Yes, you can always grab them from your reference but I'm liking this blue with this magenta or this alizarin here. So I might steal some of these and put them off to the side, kind of create my own palette. Yep, didn't grab what I wanted. Because we didn't look for all this reference in order to just base it all off of one photo and one set of colors. And I love this pop of, of red on her collar. It's kind of orangish red. All right. And then I'm always squinting and I'm finding kind of the darkest darks that need to be established. And she has that really strong makeup at the edges of her eyelashes and on the outside of her eye. And 
And again, this is just with basic brushes. Basic shape sensitive brush at about 70% opacity. But it mixes with the, the layers underneath. She has a pretty short lower jaw under her lower lip. As that goes into her neck, I can emphasize that. And then the shadows under her eyes, her cheekbones. Throw some of this extreme color in there. takes a lot of concentration. I'm going to keep kind of doing the same things and talking through it. It's just a form of teaching called cognitive modeling. But you're really just kind of reacting to what you put down and what you're looking at. You're making a painting. Just with basic brushes on your base layer. And this is why when you see demos of digital painting online, they're almost always speed paintings because it's just, it's a lot of this. It's not a lot to say about it. It's very direct. You're using one tool. And then once you feel like you've filled up most of that background, right, don't forget the parts that are less interesting to you, like the shoulders, the neck. I'm going to block that in. few different blues. And I don't like to have things that are just cropped for no real reason. So this is all on one layer, right? So at this point I can command T and I can maybe shrink it a little bit. So I have a bottom edge I can work with like a spot illustration. So it doesn't look arbitrarily cropped off. And even though I'm cutting her off at the shoulders, I can kind of use that as a painted edge. That's maybe a little more satisfying. Okay, what else? bridge of her nose, some interesting color I can use there. And then don't forget highlights, kind of squinting in and seeing she has these bright highlights under her eyes on the inside where her skin is kind of reflecting the light of the photograph.
So when you want to refine your painting, the answer is just more paint on top. Don't worry about erasing. Don't worry about uh, using your command T to alter everything all the time to get the shape right. Just try repainting its shape, correcting it as you go until you feel like you've covered your base layer. But do pay attention to shading a little bit, right? So this is a hard edge brush, not a lot of softness between these edges. The only softness that's created is from the opacity of the brush overlapping. And if I zoom in on it, it's just not going to be a very satisfying. This looks like a bunch of like balloons layered up on top of each other. All right. But it's already very different than digital coloring. I'm going to save my work. Now, is there a way to kind of use these things together? I actually think this is getting more in the direction of my final painting that I like than than this, this seems sort of rigid, but I can always make a duplicate, put it on top, make a duplicate, and I can kind of work these two together just like I did with the photo reference. I can Command T my shape painting underneath, and I can warp it, push it around, maybe to match the proportions of my sketch a little bit better. We're just making ourselves look for the same things in our reference over and over again. All right? So that would look like that. And this makes her face look a lot thinner. This makes her face look a little bit rounder because it's based on the proportions of the sketch. But then, of course, I can go the opposite way. I can make my sketch match my shape painting. Command T, warp, and maybe I split the difference. You know, something like that. So that's my sketch. And then my shape painting, I'll duplicate it again. Let's make it match that. just means extending the, the nose and the lips a little bit. That way. So I have these different options just for my shape painting and how I alter it. So that was the original one I did. It looks fine, but it looks too skinny, too stiff. That's the one I did, kind of informed by my sketch, but not going all the way. And that's the one I did trying to match my sketch, and that seems too stretched out. So I think it's that middle ground one that I'll keep as my base painting. I'll erase the others. Then I have a sketch, and I have a base painting I can work with. And then if I want, I can even match my photo to it. Bring my photo over the top, take its opacity down a little bit, Command T, and see if it matches. You know, locking proportions. Making it a little bit bigger. But this is your stylization. So then, how much is my painting reflecting what that photo reference is? Ooh. So that's all just to get one layer of paint that you're happy with. I want to make her hair a little bit bigger. But other than that,